call upon the pro team to put that map back up for the reference if they so choose. But I'm wondering, are there certain areas of Pakistan that are particular hotbed for terrorist and militant activities? Well, thank you, Paul, for your question. Um, it's an excellent question. Um, even though uh, Riley did identify um, Waziristan and uh, Baluchistan as major sources of terrorist breeding, um, actually it, it happens all across the state. Um, the, Pakistani, um, the Pakistani government, uh, through funds from Saudi Arabia, actually funds madrasas. Now madrasas um, are centers that where young boys go and they learn like, about these Islamic fundamentalism concepts. And they basically, many, many researchers have cited this, it's a prime breeding ground for, um, for elements of Taliban recruiting and that thing. So even though the hotbed is in that area, there are also other areas as well. Mm -hmm. of any of all terrorist forces. Attacking Pakistan's uh, militants would deal a substan substantial blow to their headquarters. And Pakistan is where they do most of their operations. This is the central hub of Al-Qaeda, and most likely the Taliban. So if we can hit them there, and hit them where we're hurting most, we can substantially decrease their chances of attacking anywhere else. And they, it's very unlikely that they'll ever be um, To the content, would you be unwilling to uh, consider limited military operations in Pakistan as a supplement to the plan you've already outlined? Thank you for the question. Um, limited military involvement. Well, we've seen drone attacks, and they're considered limited uh, military involvement, and we've seen what they result in, which is very negative results. So at this point, limited military involvement would still put US forces on Pakistani ground. So that being said, the Pakistani people have shown that they do not want that. And if we put troops on the ground, then they are going to react to that. And they are going to, most, some of them most likely, fight us about it. So I think that's the underlying point there. You guys have emphasized that um, education is a way to fight um, the terrorism and everything. But how do you respond to the fact that there are a lot of terrorist groups using education in order to um, get the youth onto their side? question, you said that um, you would be using education, that the terrorists would be using education to further their own aims as well. Um, the problem with this is the fact that um, the education that the terrorists would be using is closer, much closer to indoctrination. They would be teaching them to hold only their ideals, and also they wouldn't be teaching them fundamental um, things that we hold to be education, for instance, reading, writing, um, job skills, things like that. So for that reason, I think that we should, um, the, the schools that we would build would focus on economic improvement as opposed to simply religious fundamentalism. Thank you. In the 1980s, Charlie Wilson headed the U.S. program to support and train the Afghan military to fight Russian insurgents. He later lamented the fact that the weapons and training provided allowed military suppression of the Afghan people. What definite guarantee can you provide that your plan will not have the same result in Pakistan, a nation with a strong history of military suppression? Um, well, I'd have to say that the assurance that the Pakistani government will not um, oppress the people is in the fact that they are trying to stop the oppression of the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. They're asking for help. They ask for military aid, but they also want economic aid. And one of the things that the Khan side is really arguing against is that we're not we're not dealing with education, we're not helping the people. And that's something that Pakistan has invited us to do. As early as May 2008, we had 25 to 50 US special forces building schools. The Taliban, all they want to do is destroy. They burn schools, they kidnap 80 college students. And so the assurance is, is education. Talk about education a lot. Um, how do you control I guess, how do you control the uh, curriculum in the schools without it uh, slipping into a terrorist ideology that uh, focuses 
emphasis on true education rather than uh, a religious sort of fundamentalist idea. Thank you, Mr. Christie, for your question. Um, what our side would like to argue would be, we call for a system of voluntary transparency on the part of the Pakistani um, government in funding the schools. Basically, we would provide cash and such things for um, funding the schools and tell them, look, you need these kind of curriculums, you need to be transparent about this is what kind of um, curriculum you will be teaching the students so that as opposed to just having religious indoctrination, as is common among some schools such as the Madrasas, um, we would teach important skills, as we mentioned earlier, that would educate the public and promote their um, economic stability and independence. 